Shanann, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. Please bring her back. He was a successful family man with a well-paid job, married to a beautiful wife, father to two children, with a third on the way. But that wasn't enough for him. What caused Chris Watts to snap? And what happened to his family? My name is Adrian, and allow me to make you a fresh brew. Today we're looking at the annihilation of the Watts family, so sit back and relax. Let's investigate. About 30 miles north of Denver lies a small town in Weld County, Colorado. Frederick has a population of just 14,000 people. Originally a mining town at the start of the 20th century, Fredericktown now specializes in engineering, with employers such as JBS Swift, Vestas, and Anadarko Petroleum Corporation. And one of the resident families, the Watts family, lived on Saratoga Trail, a neighborhood on the outskirts of the city. There lived husband and wife, Chris and Shannon Watts, and their two kids. Shannon Watts was a happy and proud mother. She was born in New Jersey on January the 10th, 1984, and she met Chris in 2010. The two had married by 2012 in Charlotte, North Carolina. From 2013 to 2016, Shannon was a nurse specialist at a local children's hospital. Shortly after, she became an independent representative for Lavelle, a company selling health and wellness products. Chris Watts was born on May the 16th, 1985. And although he jumped from job to job, he found his feet in 2017 working for Anadarko Petroleum Company as a operator. Chris and Shannon had two kids together, Bella was born on December the 17th, 2013, while Celeste was born on July the 17th, 2015. They were a happy young family. Although things were not perfect, trailing into 2015, Shannon was so excited to have a second child, partially because after her first child, Bella, she was diagnosed with lupus, a condition that causes joint pain, organ inflammation, tiredness, and skin rashes. And only one month before Celeste was born, Chris and Shannon filed for bankruptcy. Although the two were pulling over $90,000 a year, they couldn't keep up with their $3,000 a month mortgage or their $600 a month car repayment plan. There were feuds in the family too. Chris's parents didn't like Shannon. They found her to be unreasonable and high maintenance. Chris's parents disagreed with Shannon so much, in fact, that they didn't turn up to their wedding. So the health and financial uncertainties caused a lot of arguments in 2018 but Shannon always put a brave face on for her friends and family. Her Facebook, still live to this date, is full of happy selfies and videos. In May 2018, she posted a live video on Facebook, showing how much she loved and appreciated her family life. Another video shows her breaking the happy news to Chris that they're expecting a third baby. <laughs> I like that shirt. The test. That's awesome. Don't act too excited there, mate. On June the 17th, 2018, Father's Day, she posted the following message to Facebook. The Watts family had their weaknesses, but then again, who doesn't? They seemed strong from the outside. What could possibly go wrong? Fast forward almost two months, and the date is August the 13th, 2018. Shannon's friend, Nicole Atkinson, had started to grow a little worried. Shannon had not replied to any of her text messages or phone calls throughout the morning. The two had actually just arrived home from a business trip to Arizona, getting home at around about 1.45 in the morning. Nicole knew that Shannon had a doctor's appointment later on that day, and she wanted to know how it went. But as those hours went by, Nicole's worry started to grow. She decided to drop by Shannon's house to make sure everything was okay. And after seeing Shannon's car in the drive and Shannon's shoes by the door, her worry grew even larger. Nicole knew about Shannon's condition of lupus, so she was concerned for her health. She decided to call the police. Shortly after, police arrive at the house to conduct a welfare check. Hi. Nicole? Yes. What's going on? 
Chris Watts also returns home from work and allows the police to enter the property. Grab, how you doing? How's it going? Inside, they find Shanann's keys, medication, phone, and purse, and soon after, her wedding ring. Chris then tells police that she told him before he left to work that she was going to a friend's house with the kids later that day, and that's the last he'd heard from her. He said that she was being very vague, but he left the house around 5.30 in the morning for work. By this stage, everyone was starting to get a little worried for Shanann and the kids. Next, the police and Chris Watts are invited over to his neighbour's house. Their neighbour, Nate, had installed a home surveillance system to capture any motion from outside his front door. Coincidentally, this also points towards the Watts house, and would record any motion detected from their driveway. At 5.27am, Nate's camera records Chris backing his track up, partially into the garage. And while the back of the truck is out of sight, Chris can be seen loading items into the truck, including a tank of gasoline. Further to this, despite Chris's claim that his wife was going to a friend's house, the camera didn't pick up any motion of Shannon or the girls leaving later in the day. You're right there, Chris. You're uh, starting to look a little nervous. The next day, on August the 14th, Chris appeared on a local news channel to appeal for the safe return of his family. But, while this was going on, police were looking into the Watts family history, and oh, how it turns out that actually, very recently, Chris was having an affair with another woman. During the interview, in an open question, Chris claimed that he wasn't romantically or sexually involved with anyone else. This alerted the detective's suspicion. They had actually already interviewed Chris's new mistress, Nicole Kessinger, who confirmed to police that she had been dating Chris for the last few weeks now. Detectives also noticed Chris's broken alibi from earlier. Oops. So with two lies already identified, police, they, they really wanted that polygraph test. He failed it, miserably actually. D detectives were all over him. So, um, it was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Chris, no. stop. It's time. I, just I'm, stop for a minute, take a deep breath. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. We're not here to play games, we're not here to do any of that with you, we just want to know what happened. It's not even, it's not even an option right now, because I you did not pass the polygraph, I so I know you were being deceptive, so I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I can I can see it in your face. After confronting him that he failed, they started interrogating him over his affair, over his wife, over his kids, over his emotions. Buckling under the pressure, and with no sufficient story to fall back on, Chris admitted to murdering Shannon Watts. He claimed that the motive for murder was rage. You see, apparently, early that morning, he found Shannon Watts in one of the children's bedrooms, and there he found that she'd smothered them both to death. Chris's claim, though, that Shannon killed her kids was another lie, because three months later, before standing on trial, he also admitted to murdering both of his daughters. On November the 19th, 2018, Chris Watts was sentenced to five life sentences without the possibility of parole. He was given two life sentences each, per person under the age of 12 years old. So, what happened on the morning of August the 13th? The tale starts three days earlier, actually, where Shannon was still on a business trip with a friend Nicole in Arizona. The day before returning, Shannon had noticed on a shared bank account with Chris that he'd spent over $60 at a local restaurant the night before, on August the 11th. At the time, he actually claimed to Shannon that he was going to a baseball game with friends that evening, which Shannon sniffed out. She also knew how much a meal and a drink would cost at that restaurant, the Lazy Dog Sports Bar. And this bill, it, um, it added up to two people. The alarm bells in her head that Chris was probably having an affair at this point were probably ringing pretty loudly. In later interviews, Chris revealed that by the time Shannon arrived home early that morning, she knew something was going on with him and another woman. When she arrived home from a business trip early in the morning, she got into bed where Chris was already asleep. She initiated sex, they then slept into the early morning. And then, at around 4am in the morning, when the two woke up, Chris confronted Shannon about his affair, and told her that he wanted to break up with her, 
as soon as possible. This led into an argument between the two. Shanann was furiously upset. She ended the conversation by saying, you're never going to see your kids again. Chris snapped. He straddled Shanann, put his hands around her throat and strangled his wife to death. Their daughter Bella, she walks into the room shortly after he's killed his wife and she asks her father, what's wrong with mummy? Chris tells Bella that mummy's sick but she'll be fine. He wraps Shannon in the bed sheets, drags her body downstairs into the truck while Bella watches. Celeste is awake by now. Chris grabs Bella and Celeste and he puts them in the truck with their mother's body on the floor of the truck by their feet. They then drive one hour from their home to Survey 319, an oil well site that Chris frequents at work. And once they get there, Chris smothers both of his daughters to death, Celeste first and then Bella. He buries Shanann in a shallow grave, just beyond the perimeter of Survey 319, and he dumps both of his daughters in individual oil well tanks. After disposing of the bodies, Chris then drives to work to start his shift. On the way, he looked up the lyrics to a song by Metallica, Battery, which contains the lyrics cannot kill the family. He then makes several phone calls, one to the children's school, to notify them that he's enrolling both of his kids out of school. He then contacts a realtor to start discussions on selling the house. And he then texts his new girlfriend to talk about the future with her. After Chris confesses to murdering both his wife and his two daughters, he tells police where they can find the bodies. Police would also later find the bed sheets that Shannon was wrapped up in before she was buried. So what was Chris's motive? Throughout the entire affair, Nicole Kessinger had no idea that Chris was still romantically or sexually involved with his wife Shannon. Chris told Nicole that they were in the process of a divorce. She had no idea that Shannon was pregnant for a third time. Chris lied about everything. You see, Chris only started to get to know Nicole Kessinger from around about mid-June that year. And from the end of June, Shannon and the kids were on vacation for five weeks visiting Shannon's parents in North Carolina. Chris stayed home in Colorado to work, though I'm sure he was also excited to have the freedom to be able to date Nicole without the risk of getting caught by his wife. And around the same time, cracks started to show between Chris and Shanann's relationship. Shanann started to feel like Chris was distancing himself and felt uninterested in her. Often, he missed phone calls from Shanann, which made her feel anxious and upset. On July the 31st, just two weeks before he murdered his family, Chris flew to North Carolina to join them on their final week of vacation. But even after four weeks apart, he failed to show any sort of love or affection to Shanann, who in messages to friends, shared her frustration on how uninterested he'd become in her. Things continued to go downhill in August, as you can tell. He reveals to her that he's scared of having a third child, and that he doesn't feel it anymore. Shanann's final two weeks, more than two weeks actually, her final few weeks were emotional turmoil. All the meanwhile, Chris carried on playing toy boy with his new girlfriend. To this day, it's not entirely clear why Chris annihilated his family. The most likely motive is that he killed them only so he could get what he wanted, without having to go through financial or emotional ruin. I, I mean, right now I don't even want to just like throw anything out there. Like, I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. A recent interview from Chris Watts in prison revealed that Chris was planning on murdering his family for quite some time. He also shared that time was moving so fast during the crime that a lot of his actions were impulsive and without thought. This included the moments that he choked both of his girls to death. It's impossible for Chris to get out of prison with his sentence. He will die behind bars. Serves him right. Stone Cold Monster. But a uh, fun fact, you can actually buy the Watts family house if you wish, if uh, that's your thing. Since their murders over two years ago, 2825 Saratoga Trail has remained vacant and empty. The property was originally put on the market for just over $600,000, but no one was interested in buying it for market value. 
wonder why. The property was taken off of the market again a few months ago, following the case's notoriety. But it could be back on for auction as soon as next month. Last month, Chris also shared that he hates the holidays in prison. No festive dinner around the family table for you this Christmas. It's bland turkey and potatoes in a cell. Hello there, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I do many more cases like this here on this channel, so please like the video and subscribe for more. What do you think of the Watts case? Is there anything you feel law enforcement or I missed? Any twists to the story? Write to me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're still interested in this case, Netflix has done a 90 minute video on the Watts family murders. You can find this under American Murder, The Family Next Door. And if you're really interested, Weld County's District Attorney Office released a 1,960 page document detailing the investigations and conclusions of the Watts family murders. I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.